Unfortunately, in this upstairs bedroom, there are areas where some idiot has just plastered on bits of plaster and cement across the lovely stonework. Some of it I can cover with paintings. Certainly can't be going around chiselling it all out. Uh, but this particular piece on the baluster here, what I'm going to do is try and make a little panel of paintings. I was going to try and get a tapestry done, but I put three paintings together in a shape here that just slot round and cover that. So I'm going to put a little landscape on, which I thought you'd like to see me doing, and show how we can change the composition of a painting or photographs and uh, convert them into a shape that will fit almost any shape we want. Which will be quite fun, I think. So we're going to, going to do that in acrylic next. Right, we'll have a go at this uh, almost triptych, isn't it, with the uh, three panels. And we're going to work from this photograph that I've already shown you here. Uh, and very loosely and creatively put together a composition based upon it, not copied from it. So I want to start with my mid-tones. I'm going to start with various mid-greens here. Um, take some sap green first of all, I think. There's a little bit of it's very gundy sap green, there. a little bit of um, cobalt blue to make some deeper green. So look at that, see how that goes. Yeah, that's fine. It's a nice and warm, deep green. Just work into the background there. And I'm going to paint my mid tones and work through to my darks, and then work my lighter colours up afterwards. Now, the basic recipe for a landscape is that we paint our details in the foreground and our, it goes more out of focus in the background and it's warmer in the foreground and cooler in the background. So I'm going to put some cooler greens into these in just a moment just to get me started off. So as you see, it's a fairly warm green at the moment. I thought that would be come up behind there and down through here. And the rocks and stones and things down here also have moss growing on them. So I'm going to start putting in some of those greens already. So does this here, where the sort of island is on the tree. In fact, the tree is quite green as well. It comes right down there through these bits of moss that come out of here, down here. To make it up as we go along, so we're just changing this as I go along. We're not planning it all out way ahead of time. Just getting some ideas now. I want to go cooler, so I'm going to take more of that cobalt. It's still quite a dark blue, green. I'm going to put that into the background here. So we really get the feeling of distance. Got to just blend those marks in to the background here. Right through to here, and through into the water. Where this is going is going to be quite a dark space, so uh, I need to get some nice lights amongst it, otherwise it's going to disappear. Right down to here in the water, blues and greens coming down to the water here. I'm going to take some turquoise now and add that to it and just make a very light blue-green base colour into my river here. Bring some of that deeper blue green back into here. This canvas is very absorbent so I'm having to use a fair bit of water with it at the minute. I'm just going to paint that blue just thinly through here because I want to lose this white. I can just see where the trees are going to go then, it's not a problem, it's just to help my colour values and tonal values. And these warmer blues that come down to here, right down around these great big rocks. And there's some pure blue down here at the ultramarine, which will really push some of these colours here and enjoy them. So 
sort of cobalt blue here, looking through, right through to here, down to right through to there. This colour coming through here, with the greens there. And I'll just sort of find these rocks as I go along, I think. I might well paint the edge of these canvases too because I don't want white showing against that wall. It will be warm as it happens amongst the, the water. Where the sun shines, we get these warmer tones coming through. You can go one colour over another to almost get glazes in places too. Don't forget the vertical strokes as well as horizontal to get the feeling of reflections. Put a bit of yellow ochre into it now. Bring some little more golds into the picture. I'm going to come into my darker colours in a moment and start putting in some deeper purples into here. Once I've got these worms really established and the blues reflecting through. Just as base colours. Right, right let's start to work on some of the darker colours. Don't want to use black, I'm going to use deep purple and deep blue first. So I'll come up to my Prussian blue and deep purple and let's look straight away at this tree here. Bring that down through here. Let's establish this lovely deep cool tree that's coming down here. Things in there. Quite heavily and comes down to a lovely curve here into the I always make this warmer and darker by adding some more brown to it. Let's see, here we go, let's get the cools in first anyway, and that comes, those darks come behind here. It's going to indicate these dark areas coming on down behind first of all. Working up these lovely darks, reflections here in the background. Big stones that are coming in here, rocks and so on that are coming through. I'll find them now. to try and bring some of these trees from here through here into this bit of picture here down and right through we can use some black in here later as well we'll see how it goes so we bring one thing through into another week as we go around this you can see I'm establishing all of my mid-tones and darks all I've got to do is come back in and really enjoy painting in the uh, highlights, which is going to be great fun. I've got to go down scaling brushes because I need to paint in these branches and, tr and trees here in the background. Some of these reflections come down almost like shadows into the water here, just breaking down and through where the water is going to be going here to get the feeling of reflections coming through here. When I put the lighter colours in them, it will make more sense. Right the way down through into here, we'll just drag some of these lines down through, giving more verticals to start with. I've said this before get your verticals in first, get your depth of water in first, get your shadows and reflections go in the depth of water and then we can bring back in uh, horizontals afterwards. The first thing is to get the feeling of the depth. Like that. Okay, now we can start to work up our lighter tones. We'll just start with the 
pale blue greens in the background so I'm going to take some turquoise a little bit of chrome yellow and just start to feel some of these cooler colours in between the branches back here the colours are going to sink a bit as we do them which is good because they just blend back in that way feel across the bank a bit here so we're building it up now and then it goes lighter and lighter as I go along I'm using my cool colours first in the background to push this back we really need to look where else it goes comes on down we're going to have those things coming into to here so those vertigos going to reflections in the water Make a bit more lemon yellow into it now to start to get these brighter, cool, cool greens in the background. All right, we really need to start making these much lighter greens now. So I'm going to take some lemon yellow again, some white, put into it, and we're going to take that down a little with a touch of. Cerulean, or I could use emerald if I wanted, but I really want to. Well, let's just do that. Such a touch of cerulean. I'm going to use a bit of emerald deliberately, just to show you how strong these greens can become. Right, let's catch the sunlight coming up here and across these. A bit too bright, but I'll come back in a minute and just soften that down a bit. I want these light highlights, but not quite as strong as that. So I'm just going to take that down a bit with some of the previous. Um, the greens, the turquoise and so on. It's going to find this sunlight coming up and around this tree here and down. So we're just painting with highlights and tarnie now. I'm using the tip of the brush to give these little strokes of grasses and highlights coming up into the trees. Let's soften that right down with some more turquoise and we'll come back up into here and start putting in the highlights in the trees behind as well could do this with a sponge to get more texture but I just want to use the tip of my brush just to lightly paint these highlights in here and behind. Now let's take that stronger colour and we'll start to bring in these little leaves that are cascading in from one side here. Be careful twist your brush a bit and not let patterns occur or you'll find yourself painting a pattern across here rather than little bunches of leaves. I just want to flick the brush tip across here to capture the idea of the bunches of leaves coming through in front of the other layers. Like that. And we can start to do a bit of the same round here as well. We can bring a few leaves coming in here. So I come in ahead of the other ones and let they reflect down into the water as well. We're going to warm this water up a bit shortly. In a moment now, let's just get all these leaves cascading in down. They come right through here. As I say, we're making this up, we're changing the composition around. And Get this effect of dappled sunlight. It's stronger in the greens, so I'll take a bit more of my emerald and we will deliberately go in with a bit more emerald green. I've had a wee touch of the, I don't just want a cool green, but a bit warmer green, a wee touch of the uh, sap green with the emerald to start to feel some of these green, just greener colours going on back here. Now, warmer. We want some cadmium orange going on now in the uh, in the water here. Just start to feel cadmium orange and a little bit of, of um, burnt sienna, just to start to really feel these bits of sunlight coming down into the water. So cadmium orange and a little bit of burnt sienna, just to start to feel some of these beautiful warms. And that's a really hit these ones in a moment, much, much more than this. It's almost an abstract just based upon it, isn't it? 
Okay, a little break and we'll carry on. Now I want to start on these light blues and we've got cool and warm blues. We've already got some of the blues going on in here but I want to go very light now so white and a little touch of um, the turquoise. Tiniest touch just, just to take uh, the white away and I might even use a bit of cream later. Let's just see how we get on with that first before we use the cream. I want to just start to bring the sparkle of this water down. It looks almost white but it isn't quite and I'm going to put more blue in here in a minute. Bring it right down from behind the trees here, cascading down through, round, back in and down. I don't want this to come cascading all the way down through here. It's going to come down and around, and down into the... So we're leading it right through here. So the light coming down. The bits of light are going to come all the way down into here because we're making almost an abstract up and the rocks themselves that are cutting the light here so we are going to quite light colours and I'm going to go lighter still this might seem light right now but not long from now I'm going to put more lights over this so it will seem even brighter try brushwork just over the surface of the stones now here Get the feeling of this. Oh, too many whites down here. I'm doing that a bit. Just have to watch my abstraction as this happens as these lights come down through. That blue's actually coming up into the branches and things here as well. I'll do it much stronger blues there in a minute as well. I'm going to bring even stronger blues into that around these rocks, around the tree here. I'm going to go down to some pure ultramarine start to work some lovely strong blues down to these areas where the sky is really reflecting much more strongly here. Get the feeling of atmosphere and light trickling down through here. Right, I'm going to use um, white and a wee touch of lemon yellow now. And that should really... I may even use a bit of cadmium orange and white as well in a minute. Tip the white and a little touch of the yellow, pure white, sort of tiniest touch of, of um, camel orange in there. Let's see how that goes. Being a little bit lighter yet, it seems to be almost white that, just with a slight tint of warmth in it, so we get the feeling of the froth just. Catching the sunlight here and there like that look. It really makes such a difference. And look how lovely and sunny that's suddenly becoming now. Isn't it fun? And you see me work it in about oh, three quarters of an hour I've been painting this now. Just building it up. I'm deliberately going to go down to a bit of black now. I don't normally use this, but I want to just use some warm and dark in the foreground. So let's just bring some black into here where I want this closer shadow going on through there. Mix it up well. So we've got a sort of branch going through here which I want to darken down a bit. And make it almost three-dimensional. Even if still an impression, we've still got to let the mind do the work, we've still got to let the eye do the work, we've still got to make the viewer look at this and say, oh, what's that, what's that, and, and pick out things that he may see that we don't even see. Be bold with your strokes as well, if you've got some darks to put in, put them in, don't pussyfoot about, make a decision, know you're right, go for it. Get the feeling of rippling water through here. On this side I want to bring them more the other way. But carefully, I don't want to use, I'm, I'm a bit like a sword fence at the moment, sword fight, I'm going backwards and forwards to look at it from a distance and then coming back up and making my, my touches. There we are. So we'll just sign that one for fun. But we need to really. And I'll give it a quick coat of varnish just to show you how quickly the colours change and we can varnish as quickly as this with acrylics. I don't have to wait forever, especially painting thinly with acrylics like this. 
what I wanted to do then is go around the outside edge as well, so I'm going to take a big brush and because uh, I don't want a white edge, take some black and some deep purple and just whip around this the edges of this painting because I don't want to have a white edged canvas showing against that wall. I don't really need to do the underneath, but while I've got paint on my brush, I might as well do the job fully. Just a quick coat, all it needs. Put that back on there. I'm going to give it a quick whip of varnish to show you how that comes out with the colours. And then we'll go and put it in the room and see what it looks like, shall we? I think I'm about done there. Just have one last look and make sure. Well, then I'm going to just going to add a couple more colours. Um, now I'm looking at this, I'd like to have a slightly more yellow ochre, brown, green going on across some of these rocks here. Just a little bit more mossiness on some of the rocks just there. Palette top back on again. It's just starting to dry out here a bit, so we've got to pour some water in there. That paint's had long enough to dry now, so I'm using a, a water-based acrylic varnish anyway, so even if I want to come back and retouch it, I can do so. And look how the dark suddenly come out there now because it's been sinking. I want it to be really much richer. A nice coat of water-based acrylic varnish and there we are well let it try and try it out well it doesn't quite cover it all up but it's better than it was right having um completed this piece tried it out on the wall I don't think I really like it, um, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to come up into it in a completely different way. I'll put a little coat of uh, purple and black onto here, paint it out. I don't want to waste the canvases by having them just sat around and I can't really use them. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is bring on a, a picture about flowers. What I'm going to do is paint a picture about flowers here now rather than what I had. Take some of this green now um, and that into it. And I'm going to keep this top picture but bring another scene that's brighter with the flowers up from below into a semi-abstract. Play around these ideas until we get what we want and what works up there in design. I also noticed that it wasn't really bright enough for my liking when I was uh, had it in the bedroom. So let's have a look at that and just see if we can make some of those marks a bit more interesting and a bit brighter for up there because that's where it matters. It's not a matter of what's outside, but what is inside, what actually happens in the painting. So I'll brighten this up here and we're going to bring in some nice poppies and red flowers and things down below. as a sort of semi-abstract to give the feeling of France, to give the feeling of light and colour in that little corner of the, of the room. Then we'll try it again and see if we like it then. If we don't like it then we'll change it again until we do like it. Right, so I've made a mixture of uh, black and purple just coming up here, a bit of green coming in. I'm going to gradually now bring in these flowers and things from here into this for fun. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use not only the brush but a bit of sponge as well, just, for, just, just, just to say literally for fun, to get the idea of flowers coming in mistily to make a sort of semi-abstract uh, French scene of the rivers and the, and the woodland coming down into meadowland here. And let's get a nice big brush to do that with. I'm going to pick up some paint for this uh, sponge. 
and I want a nice clean cadmium red for that. So pure cadmium red just on the tip of my sponge and we'll just see if we can break into here to give the feeling. Again do twist the sponge, don't let the sponge become a pattern and we'll bring that red right the way up into there just gently and lightly across as it comes as if from the distance. And then it gets stronger as it comes down into lines of flowers coming across. I'll push a bit harder when it comes down here as well. And after that I'm going to be going into it the brush. I'm going to go and wash that off in a minute but we'll take the brush now and start to paint actual poppy shapes into here. The grass is amongst it in just a moment. So we're totally experimenting and exploring. I'm going to come back over these in a, in a, in a minute with um, some green and then come back in with the red later again. So uh, I just want to explore and find my way with this. Let's so give the illusion of poppies there. I could use a, a rake for this really, it would be much easier, but um, a bit more time with this and we'll get the same effect I think. Right up in behind, up into this background of greens as it merges away into the distance. I'm not using a fine brush for this, I'm just using the edge of the velvet. Just use the tip of the brush to give the illusion of the leaves going back away into the distance. All for fun. This is just a piece of decoration for the bedroom. But if it gives you ideas to paint with as well, well that's what we're here for. Right, I'm going to have to use a bit more orange onto those. I'm going to take some cadmium orange and Bring that into some of these poppies to give them a little bit more vibrance here in the sunshine. Back into the red again. And we're going to put a bit of magenta into here in a moment as well to start to feel these a bit more. Now I want to go to the magenta. Very lovely pinker magenta. I'll start to feel a bit more of the cooler warmth amongst it. Now I want to find some of these beautiful blues in here of these blue flowers. I think to do that I'm going to use try to use it straight away some cobalt. I'll just put in cobalt amongst it. These blues are going to look beautiful amongst this. And back up into here. Blues and the greens playing against the reds. No idea if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to have fun trying. Now to the ultramarine then, much stronger blue. So we'll give more of a purple feel. And of course because this is more purple, um, the other colours, the other blues are going to seem even lighter now. We may to actually come down to a purple in a moment and add a purple haze to this. We've got little white um, Days is coming in this was lovely as well. So let's see if we can now find that, that purple which is more of magenta in fact. Find a there where magenta is. There we are now. Take that magenta and some white. This impressionist technique of fooling the eye with one colour against another. Right, we'll uh, look at the yellow now. I want a really nice bright clean yellow for this. Nice and light yellow, so I'll take a bit of chrome and white at the moment. A little bit of lemon, more white. Just tips of flowers showing. And a melange of French flower images, meadow flower images. And finally, come towards 
And they gradually disappear into the distance there, don't they? Now, some daisies. I've got some nice little daisies. I'm going to go to a pointy brush. Right, pure white on my brush. And let's have a look with some of these daisies. Might just come for fun. Explosions of white. And a field of daisies and poppies appears. To cheer us up. I hate to use the word pretty, but it makes a nice little pretty scene. Into the middle of that, we can take the yellow and we can give the archetype a little bit of daisy yellow there. Now, how much more do I need to do? Unfortunately, the colours have sunk a bit, but um, I think it's about what I was aiming for on that. It's uh, not much further to go with it, really. Just um, take some of the, the greens again and just come back into here and in the distance. I if there's a little more things happening right back here. Now I think we need to try that upstairs in the bedroom and see how that looks. 